can you trust the colors that you see on your computer screen? I would say not necessarily. Let's look into that in more detail. What do I mean by trust the colors? Well, the thing is, all devices are made differently. Even the Apple devices, which I'm using here, and I've got quite a few surrounding me. I've got a couple of iPads and another iMac out of camera shot. And the colors on those screens aren't necessarily identical because each device has its own characteristics. And as soon as you go to the different other monitor brands, you may find that some are a bit darker, a bit, uh, a little bit bluer, a little bit warmer than others. And you, you just don't know how they come out of the factory. I'm not going to be talking about color management in great detail. That's a rabbit hole that we don't have time for in one single video. If you want to know more about that, I do have an entire Lightroom training course, which has a huge module on printing, and that delves much deeper into full color management if you should be so interested. What I want to do today is simply talk about how you can make this screen more or less reliable. And it's, an, it, it's not an exact science, it's a lot less objective than it maybe could be, but the idea is to get your screen to a level that's a known brightness, how bright it is, how intense it is, and also, more importantly, a known whiteness, so that when you have something that should be white on, in an image, like a piece of paper, it looks white on the screen. Not a little bit orange and warm, not a little bit blue and cool, but actually a neutral white. That's what we want to set up. Your eye is not a very good measuring tool. It's an astonishingly good comparative tool. And if you look on the screen now, you'll see some white patches. And which one of those is a neutral white? really hard to tell, isn't it? And the more you stare at it, the more confusing you get. What you need is a device which can measure objectively brightness and whiteness. And that's what the Data Color Spider does, and obviously other similar devices. It's a simple enough tool. It's just a little case with a light sensor inside it, and that does actually hang on the screen like that. And we'll come back to that in a minute when I go through the procedure, but that's all it is. And what this does is objectively measure not only brightness and whiteness, but also individual colors as well, as we shall see. Okay, so let's start. When you in buy the actual device, you get some software with it, which you can download off the internet and you need to install that on your computer. So this is the software as it would be, as you would launch it. And it's got a nice welcome screen, as you can see here. Um, warm up, lighting conditions, etc. You can read the uh, in the notes on the right hand side here, and that gives you uh, some information about what these different settings are. But mo most important is that you have it warmed up for a while so that everything's settled down. Okay, it's a very straightforward process. You just follow the wizard, and there's a few decisions we need to make along the way. Uh, follow the instructions. Mine is a Mac iMac written in late 2015, 16, and later there, so I choose wide LED go to next. Now there are some adjustments we need to make here. We're going for a full calibration because this uh, this laptop has not been calibrated and I need to make sure that we have adjusted it from a factory state. So these adjustments here are going to be changed by me because I think that they are not, they're not exactly what I want. Let's just go into that a little bit more detail. Change settings down the bottom left. Leave that alone. Gamma 2.2 which is recommended. Now it says recommended 6,500. Now 6,500 Kelvin is a white point for daylight. Now I'm going to suggest that you change it to 5,800, which is a little bit warmer. And that's because you're often using your laptop indoors and if you ever make a print, it's probably viewed indoors. So this is halfway between indoors and outdoor light quality. So it's a bit of a hedge in both directions. Feel free to change that. But I personally find that 6,500 is a little bit blue for my taste. Again, that is somewhat subjective, but I think you'll find you get better results overall with a 5,800 Kelvin setting. And that's the same Kelvin setting as you would set the white point in your camera. So that is not daylight. That might be very similar to, let's say, cloudy. Not quite shade, but cloudy, just a warmer version. Brightness, do not adjust. Well, I'm going to recommend that you do adjust it. So change that to adjust. Doesn't say here, 
but it will adjust it, or you will adjust your monitor, to a target of 120 candles per square meter, which seems to be a reasonable brightness for your screen. It's not super critical what it is, just as long as you know what it is. And that will become apparent in a sec. And for the moment, let's leave uh, room light off, because at the moment we're just trying to get the screen into the ballpark. We're not trying to do anything too clever with color management. So that would be a good starting point, what I've put on the screen there. Next, place spider here. That's fairly obvious what we do. So we'll take off the back. The back acts as a counterweight. You hang that down the back of the screen and you make sure that the spider is placed in the target area. Make sure it's sitting nice and snug against the screen. You don't want any gaps, so tilt the screen back slightly if, you, uh, if it doesn't sit nice and snug. Now what's going to happen next is it's going to shine on the screen, or the screen is going to display black, white, grey and the three primary colours. So it's going to be measuring the starting state of the screen, in particular the, the brightness doesn't take long to do and then we're going to adjust the brightness of the screen to match the target and you'll see on the right here target 120 current 110 now in this particular case that is as close as I'm going to get it because on the Mac laptops you may if you have one yourself you'll know and, and on the iMac screens there is no numerical setting for brightness you've just got this little slider here and if I slide that let's move that out of the way a sec you'll see the little brightness scale come up on the screen here. Now it's got no numbers. That's the middle point just below the lower line on that little sun symbol. And I'm going to go up one, two, three from the halfway point. Then I'm going to click update. And you should find that is pretty close. There it is, current 107. That is close enough for the, uh, the intent of this. You don't have to adjust it um, to precisely 120, as long as it's close, as long as it's not like 80 or 200. And in many cases, iMac screens out of the box it might register as 200. That is too bright. And any every time somebody else looks at that photograph on another device somewhere else on the internet, or they the, you, you make a print of it or something, the print the, the print the image itself will look commensurately darker because you're judging your image on a screen which is too bright. So all the decisions you're making are from an image which is shown too bright on the screen. So it completely throws you off. That's why you've got to bring all this together to some sort of known point. And I'll just digress slightly. We're talking about calibration and profiling here, and they're not the same thing, although many people, including myself, lazily, tend to interchange the terms. They, they both in, they're both involved in the same process, but they're not quite the same thing. Calibration is what we're doing right now. We are adjusting this screen to a fixed value that we know ahead of time. When we adjust the white point, we'll do the same thing. We're adjusting the white point to 5,800 Kelvin. That's calibration, adjusting hardware to a predetermined value. Profiling is when this device measures the difference between expected colors and actual colors. So it measures um, like an error adjustment um, profile. That's essentially what it is. It's a, it's a way that the computer can apply a translation of the colors from the data of your image and what the idiosyncrasies of your screen require so that those colors become actually what they're supposed to be, if that makes sense. <laughs> so it's a correction. It's like a lookup table in Photoshop or in, in a video camera. It's a correction between the actual data and the, and the idiosyncrasies of your screen. So it cancels out the idiosyncrasies of your screen, so that when you view the image on different devices, all of which have been profiled, they should look roughly the same. That's the idea. Now again, I'm not going down the whole rabbit hole of uh, color management, that's in my course, but for the moment, we're just gonna be talking about getting your screen into a good, solid, known state that you can trust. Now, once we have done the adjustment for brightness, we simply hit continue, and it will now shine through the screen, all the different colors, the different saturations and the different brightnesses and measure this profile, this lookup table for the discrepancies between the known data which is being displayed on the screen and the actual reading that the device makes. And the better the screen, the smaller those discrepancies are. This is why having high quality screens is a good idea because the profile has less work to do. In this particular case, 
the iMac screens and the Retina screens on the laptop are, I'd call them pretty good. They're not awesome from a color management point of view, but they're more than adequate for most people's needs. So we'll just fast forward this whilst it completes its little sequence. And you get a little chime and it's completed. We can now take the spider off, put its little protective case back on again, like that, and then hit finish. Once that's done, we all should see a new name, which it automatically generates, and we'd hit save, and it saves it into the right place in your computer. Don't have to worry about where it goes to. It does uh, very politely tell you where it's been put, which is in the Color Sync Profiles folder, but really you don't need to worry too much about that. Now here's the thing. If I now go to the next step, you should see something like that, and you can choose different images, but I'll just have them all on the screen. These are just sample images. I'm going to switch. Now watch the screen. It'll go from the new state, which is neutral. You see how blue it went when I did that? Go back, that's the new state, this is the old state. You see how blue it went? That's new, old, new, old. And if I go to a black and white image, this one here will do, just click on the image to bring it up, and I'll switch to new, old, new, old you can see how blue it is. Now that, to my eye, went warmer. That's because my eye had habituated to the cooler color. So this is your eye. It's not very good at measuring, but it's very good at comparing. You can see the tiny change, but you can't tell which is correct. That's it. Then we click Next, and you'll get a representation of how that sits in the color gamut. And can you see, this is really interesting, it almost exactly corresponds to the sRGB color space. So if you were shooting with your camera in sRGB, uh, shooting JPEGs in sRGB, I should say, every image that you shoot would precisely fit into the color gamut of this screen. So it's actually uh, quite useful to know that the Apple Retina screens in general, iPads, iPhones, laptops, and desktop computers, generally are very, very close to sRGB. Now, that's neither good nor bad, it's just a useful bit of information to work to. If you want to go outside that, you're gonna to have to work with some of the more high gamut uh, color monitors, but that isn't necessarily a good thing. Now, I'm not gonna to go too far with that one, that's a far more of a, of a deep color management discussion. But basically, we're finished. Um, then we just hit quit, and we are done. So, um, the idea, just to sum up, so just to sum up, what we've done now is we've adjusted our whiteness to a specific white point of 5,800 Kelvin, and we've adjusted the brightness of the screen to roughly 120 candles per square meter. That is all we need to do. That screen now, as it stands, is reliable enough for our purposes. There are more things we can do, but again, like I said, that's getting a bit more advanced. If you do nothing more than this, you will be ahead of the game in so many ways. So many people don't even bother to do this. And then they wonder why the images look different when they've posted them on social media or they've made a print. Doing this gets your computer screen into a specific ballpark so that you can start to make subjective decisions, creative decisions about your colors and your brightness, knowing that your baseline is solid.